Suri. Suri. <laughs> Get up. Hmm? We need to talk. What's going on? Alan's back. Welcome to Observe and Report, Season 2, Episode 4, Triple Red Alert. It's 4 o'clock in the morning. What was so important that it couldn't wait? No one knows yet. He wanted to wait until all of us were here. Is that everyone? Where's Sharp? We were arguing about the list, and then he said someone's following us, and then he sent me down an alley with a gun, and then there were gunshots. Slow down, and... Alan. What are you trying to say? Sharp is dead. Dead? They shot him. How can Sharp just be dead all of a sudden? I don't understand. How did this even happen? I don't know. After I heard the gunshots, I went back to find him, but I was too late. How did they even find you? They... <clears throat> they tracked my phone. Then you've let them right to us! No. I left it in Vegas. You must have been so scared. How did you get away? Well, I... I don't know, actually. What do you mean, you don't know? That doesn't matter now. Listen. I was hiding, and I heard them say that they'll kill her if I don't give you two up. Kill who? My mom. I think they have my mom. They're going to kill Dolores? What kind of people would harm an innocent woman just to get to us? They'll never release her. As soon as they get what they want, they'll kill all of you. It's the only way to guarantee that their actions are not exposed. I can't just let them kill my mom. I have to do something. They could be bluffing. No, they didn't know I was listening. This is all my fault. I shouldn't have taken my phone. Why was I so stupid? What happened to Sharp isn't your fault. There'll be time to worry about that later. Right now, we're going to get Dolores back. Any idea where she is? I tried calling her phone, but it was disconnected. Can't we just ask Dash to locate her? <sighs> what? We still haven't made contact with the canvas. I'm so sorry. We'll... we'll start with her house in Pasadena. If we take the shuttle, we can get there in less than an hour. Wait, Zuri, I still have hours of work to do before it's ready to fly. It would be faster to drive. If Dave says the shuttle flies, I think we can believe him. The hull plating will need to be reassembled, but she'll fly. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm not willing to risk this rescue. Not to mention all of our lives, on the word of someone who has no experience with Alethian technology. Dave knows what he's talking about. Really? How many shuttles has he overhauled? Fine. We'll do it your way. Go finish checking the shuttle out. Alan, you got the supplies, right? It's in the Jeep. I'll go get it. Zuri, you don't understand. I would have to finish dismantling the hull plating, inspect each system one by one, reassemble the hull, run diagnostics, perform a comprehensive pre-flight, and then another hour of flight testing. And that's assuming nothing goes wrong. We don't have time for all that. How long will it take you to just reassemble the hole and do a pre-flight? Can't you do that in less than an hour? This is not the time for shortcuts. This is exactly the time for shortcuts. We need to hurry. Until I inspect all the systems, there's no way to guarantee that the shuttle won't go into system failure as soon as we're in the air. Is this about what happened to your leg? How dare you? Don't worry. I'll do the test flight by myself. No one else will get hurt. This isn't just about you. Then what is it? I didn't want to have to say this, but it's the fact that you can't land. Honestly, you can barely fly. <laughs> and the way I see it, we get one flight out of the shuttle before you wreck it too. One flight to get us home. Maybe you're right. But this is the best way to save Dolores. The only thing you're trying to save is your pride. You know what? I'm sorry, Mira. But driving will take too long. And as the leader of this crew, I have the final say. We're taking the shuttle. Now reassemble the hole so we can get going. No. Ugh. I've got the supplies. 
Uh oh. What did I miss? Alan, help me reassemble the hole. Alan, stay. Uh, what's going on, guys? Mira's not going to help us. What? No, the shuttle isn't safe. We're driving. Come on. Mira's just worried that the shuttle will get damaged and we won't be able to fly back to our ship. Zuri's just using this as an excuse to fly again. Alan, if we drive, we might not get there in time to save your mom. The shuttle will work. Trust me. Stop trying to manipulate him. Just wait a minute, both of you. <sighs> Let's let Alan decide what we do. Me? Fine. Alan, we need to fix the shuttle the right way. There'll be time for that later, once your mom is safe. That's true. But if we drive, we might be too late to save her. I mean, Zuri makes a good point, too. Dolores is their only leverage. They have to keep her alive. I'm sorry, Zuri, but I think we should drive. <sighs> Fine. You two drive. I'll fly. You're not coming with us? I'll free Dolores myself and see you when you get there. Don't you think it would be better if we all stay together? You two are welcome to come with me. And how exactly do you plan on flying? The hole is in pieces. I'll reassemble it myself. You know, it's just like Dave said. You don't trust anyone but yourself. I hope you figure out that this is bigger than you before it's too late. You two should get going. You have a long drive ahead of you. Don't break my ship. Okay, Alan. Focus. Tell me everything you know about your mom. Okay, uh, she's five foot two, roughly two eighty pounds. Her favorite color is. I blue. meant about the hostage situation. Oh, right. Why would I need to know her favorite color? All I heard them say is that they'll kill her if I don't give you up. They didn't say where. No. Zuri said we should start with her house, though. I don't care what Zuri said. Seems like a logical place to start. Why are you taking her side all of a sudden? I'm not taking anyone's side. I just want to find my mom, okay? Fine. We'll start with her house. We need to be ready to fight if we're going to save her. No problem. Sharp taught me how to use a gun. That's good, but we need a plan. Okay, well, what do you propose? I don't know yet. Yeah, Zuri always comes up with the plans. We're perfectly capable of coming up with a plan without Zuri. Boy, we are in deep. We have four hours. We'll come up with something. Then let's change subjects for a bit. We should talk about our phone conversation from last night. No. No? We will never speak of that conversation again. Is that clear? Well, all I was going to say is that I didn't mean, like, I love, love you, like that. I just meant, like, you know, like a friend, like a family member or something. Like, you're a sister to me. <laughs> yeah. You know, love you, sis. <laughs> really? Yes, totally. Well, I guess if that's all you meant. That's all I meant. Okay. Okay. Great. Yep. Oh, we never finished our conversation from before. You know, about the whole parents choosing your mate thing. Do we have to? I just want to know how the whole thing works. Why? Uh, I don't know. I'm just curious, I guess. Well, the parents of the couple agree on a union, and then someone officiates a ceremony where the parents declare their intentions, and the couple has an opportunity to accept or reject the proposal. Who officiates it? It's always someone who's close to both parties. It's considered an honor. 
Hey, so what's the story with Zuri? Shouldn't she have a partner by now? Why are you so interested in Zuri all of a sudden? What? I'm just curious. I didn't know Zuri before Space Corps. Hmm. You know, since you and Zuri started fighting, you haven't seemed like yourself. What's that supposed to mean? You're better when you work as a team, I guess. That's all I'm saying. You saw how she was acting. Well, you were pretty hard on her, though. Perhaps we should cease communication for a while. Come on! No, no, don't! Ugh, you worthless piece of shit! Ow! <laughs> you got something to say, Dave? Just trying to figure out the last time I saw a captain performing repairs. I told you, I'm not a captain. I'm an ensign. And what makes you think that your rank has anything to do with who you are? Well, maybe I'm just a different kind of captain. I lead by example. You call this leading? <sighs> Look, if you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. Is that why the plasma inverter is in backwards? <laughs> Look, I get it. You had a rough childhood. You learned to be independent, survive on your own, but this is leadership. If you want to succeed as a captain, it's time to leave all of that behind. That's a nice speech, but isn't a captain's job to master the operation of her ship? Is that what you think? They have to know how everything works, right? There is a wide gap between functional knowledge and mastery. You could not master every aspect of the ship's operations in your entire lifetime. But you can master one thing. Okay, then what, what should I master? Your crew. But Mira fights every decision I make. Zuri, a good captain does not have all the answers. She leads from her strengths and trusts her crew to make up for her weaknesses. What if I don't know what my strengths are? Perhaps until now they have disguised themselves as weaknesses. I'm not following. Zuri, you have an incredible tolerance for risk. You run headlong into it with a courage that most of us will never even understand. I've always been told that was a bad thing. Untempered, yes, it can be destructive, as you have learned. But it is also true that risk is the path to progress. <laughs> Did you read that out on a fortune cookie or something? Uh, your father said it, actually. My father? H how would you know? You've never met my... I suppose it's time for you to know. Your father and I used to work together. That's not possible. It's true. Okay, then. What's his name? Garrus Amara. I've known Garrus for 90 years. But that means you would have to be at least... Looks can be deceiving. Which means you... you're a... Rear Admiral Cade Larson of Space Corps Aletheia. At your service. You mean THE Admiral Larson? Who discovered the first Earth radio transmission? That was a long time ago. Admiral Larson died in 1938. Well, that's the official story anyway. This is your shuttle, isn't it? My dad sent you to save us? That's right. But you're not from the canvas. Like you said, I died in 38. I've spent most of my life here. But 
There's no record of any missions to Earth. No record of anyone even setting foot on Earth. And it must remain that way. Sharp was telling the truth. Why did you come to Earth? What was your mission? Well... Did you help abduct those people? What have you been doing all this time? I fell in love. Love? I defected. Lucille Hughes was her name. Where is she? She died in 87. She was my wife. Wait, so you married... A human? Yes. Kids? Four. Huh. Did she know about you? No. I wanted to tell her, but... But how? Yeah, exactly. The likelihood that she would believe me was slim. And women like Lucille don't marry liars. So I kept it to myself. Ironic, really. Okay, but what about all the flights back and forth between here and the canvas? What were those for? What flights? Sharp said he tracked flights between the canvas and Earth for years. Ha! Don't believe everything Ranger Rick told you. Then have our people ever abducted humans? Of course not. We saw another Alethian shuttle in the hangar at Area 51. Probably just a prototype the humans built. Mm Mm-hmm. Look, the point is, you're just like your father. And that's exactly what your crew needs to make it out of this mess. That's where you're wrong. I'm nothing like my father. How much do you know about him? I know that he's a coward. He's a hero. He abandoned me. He saved you. What? Well, guess he never told you. Told me what? I guess that makes sense. What did he not tell me? All you need to know is that he saved us. As in, all of us. And it cost him everything. The chance to ever leave his posting here. To ever live on Aletheia. To be with his wife. To get promoted above his position. And most of all, to watch his little girl grow up. (laughs) And the worst part is... He can never tell anyone. A bad reputation undeserved is a terrible burden. Tell me what he did. You are going to have to ask him yourself. But make no mistake, Zuri. Your father is a hero of the highest quality. And you are like him. And if you hope to live up to him, you're going to have to keep taking risks and paying the price. But the risks I've taken so far have just made our situation worse. They've also kept you and your crew alive. My crew. That's right. But what if I fail again? You most certainly will. And it doesn't matter. What does matter is that you learn from your failures and keep enough courage to get back up and take the next risk. Because while it may get you into trouble sometimes, I'm willing to bet that it's also the strength that's going to get you out of it. Now, Captain Amara? Yes, Admiral. As the ranking officer on this planet, I'm ordering you to repair your ship, resume command of your crew, save that old woman and return to your post so I can finally get some peace and quiet around here. (laughs) Yes, sir. That's more like it. Just one problem. What? I have no idea what I'm doing with this stuff. Well, to begin with, this cross-section is on backwards. Oh. (laughs) Will you uh, help me put this back together? Only because it'll get you out of my shop faster. (laughs) Thanks. And Zuri? Yeah? Please do not tell the others. I understand. 
Hey, so you know how to fly this thing, right? I'm not getting involved in your rescue operation. Actually, I was just going to ask, what can you teach me about landing? your help. The thief with the shiny clothes. Why would I help you, you criminal? How many friends do you have? Uh, like a million. Duh. <sighs> Real friends, Barth? Okay, three. Call them up and tell them to meet you in Pasadena. Listen, if you're looking for a getaway car for your next robbery, <laughs> you... I have a getaway UFO, thank you very much. Whatever. Why in the world would you expect me to help you? Because I'm going to buy all of your collector's items. Ha! Fat chance! The whole collection is worth $20,000. USD? <laughs> I'll give you $25,000. Don't waste my time. I know you're broke. I'll prove it. What's your cell number? You think I just give out my number to any girl who asks for it? What? Point is, I'm off the market. Things between me and Camilla are really heating Ew, up. Ew, gross! Stop! No, okay, just give me your number, you weirdo. Uh, all right, fine. But you didn't have to be so rude. I'm human too, you know. Well, I'm not. Touche. Barth, the number? Oh, yeah, uh, 323-555-1440. Just sent you an image. Whoa. That's a nice wad of cash you got there. Where'd you get it? Oh no, you didn't take my advice from before, did you? Do you want the deal or not? Alright. What do you need us to do? Commander? Have a seat, Charles. Was your team successful in tracking down the kid? It was a dead end. Alan passed his phone to someone else as a diversion. Uh, I'm sorry, we didn't... Stop groveling. We still have the mom. Have you given Alan our ultimatum? We're still trying to locate him. We put out an APB. It's only a matter of time. The other agencies must not learn the nature of our work. Of course. We said he appears to be connected with several anonymous threats to nuclear power installations. So, how's he doing? Do you know how many places a bullet can pass through the human torso without hitting any vital organs, Charles? The answer is one. So Carter was unlucky. I've seen Carter's service record. He's the best marksman JSOC ever lost. And he was only 400 meters away. You think he did this on purpose? How did Alan evade you after Sharp was shot? He slipped past Jones. The comms tech who was tracking his phone didn't notice it going past her? Uh, you need to take control of your team. They're still loyal to Sharp then perhaps we can use that to our advantage. But he won't turn. I tried. Water has no constant shape, Martinez. What does water have to do with this? It's a quote by Sin Tzu. It means we have to be adaptable. Perhaps Sharp can be useful to us in his current disposition. He may even be the key to our final play. And what exactly is our final play? Commander? Did you lose anyone in 9-11? No. 
After a short stint in the Air Force, I'd been recruited as a mid-level intelligence analyst with the DOD. I'd been there for less than a year when my husband was killed in the first tower. I'm so sorry. 9-11 woke me up. It drove me to work harder than I ever had before. I became the best analyst the DOD has ever known. Would you like to know how many terrorist attacks I've prevented? Let's just say eight more major cities would have had their own 9-11 if it weren't for me. Hmm. But being the best always comes at a price. My father won't even talk to me anymore. He said I was just out for revenge for my husband, that I'd never be satisfied, that I'd change, that I needed to heal. The list goes on. Every time I try to talk to him, he treats me like some warmongering fanatic. I think deep down he blames me for not stopping the attack. Maybe he's right. 9-11 was not your fault. Even with all our combined resources, we still don't have the capability to prevent every attack before it happens. But what if we could? How? The aliens have a ship that can simultaneously monitor and integrate every SIGINT source on the planet. That's impossible. Imagine being able to cross-reference every camera, microphone, mobile device, email, social media site, and bank account of every foreigner crossing our border. Search for the word bomb, gun, president. This ship is the answer to world peace. Why have I never heard of this before? I'm afraid that's as high as your pay grade goes. But if you help me capture those aliens, you can expect a raise soon. So that's why this is so important. Make no mistake, Charles. It's life and death. Sorry to interrupt. There's been a development. What is it? We've detected another radiation signature like the ones before. Coming from space again? This one's only 30 miles away, actually. It must be them. Launch the Phoenix. They can't be allowed to escape the atmosphere. Actually, the current trajectory is set for Los Angeles. They must know about the mother. We should move her to a much more secure location. No, this is the opportunity we've been waiting for. I'll get my team together and head to LA. No, we're still cleaning up the mess you left in Vegas. I have a better idea. No, no, no. You crash the jeep into the tree in the front yard, and I sneak in the back and shoot the bad guys. But you're a better driver. You don't have to be a good driver. Your only job is to crash. Besides, I'm the one who knows how to use the gun. Well then, teach me how to use it. It's really complicated and dangerous. Are you saying I can't handle things that are complicated and dangerous? No, I'm not saying that. I, 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 I'm an engineer, remember? Yeah. But there's more to using a gun than just head knowledge, okay? Using a gun is about instinct. You gotta feel it, you know? Oh, so Sharp gave you a 30-second crash course, and now you're an expert. Is that it? As a matter of fact, he's a great teacher. Or was, anyway. What if we get there and we're too late? I don't know. Hey, do you hear that? You hear something with your super ears? It sounds like... The, the shuttle. shuttle! Wow, looks like she did a good job putting it back together. Shut up, Alan. <laughs> right, sorry. I mean, what a shoddy patch job. Ugh. Don't patronize me either. She's coming in for a landing. Don't crash my shuttle. You gotta admit, that was pretty smooth. 
I don't have to admit anything. You nerds coming? Or are you just gonna sit there in the middle of the road? Let's go. Alan. Come on, Mira. She made it this far, and you saw that landing. She's obviously trying to make things right. Let's give her another chance. Hey. Hey, Mira. Nice landing. Thanks. Look. About what I said earlier. Stop. There's nothing to apologize for. If anything, I should be apologizing to you. If I just listened to you, we wouldn't even be trapped in this mess. You really mean that? But even through all my mistakes, you still stuck by me like a true friend. From now on, I promise to listen to you more. I'm sorry too. I haven't been fair to you. I've been blaming you for everything that goes wrong and ignoring the things you've done right. If it weren't for you, we would have never met Alan. We wouldn't have found that other shuttle in Area 51 or met Dave. And getting shot down wasn't your fault. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I didn't realize just how much I take you for granted. From now on, we're a team. All right, so what's your plan to free Alan's mom without getting us all killed? $25,000 USD. Dave's paying a ransom? Not exactly. Come on, I'll explain it. James, you made it! Bartholomew, would you like to explain to me why we're here? If this is about another bake sale fundraiser, I swear... Oh, come on! Don't be so cynical! Your text says, Excelsior crew, assemble at the following coordinates, triple red alert. Right! There's no such thing as a triple red alert. Captain Kirk called a double red alert in the conscience of the king, but most continuity experts... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made it up. It's the power of one red alert times three. I knew you wouldn't come if I just said normal red alert. (sighs) You're right. I wouldn't have... So what's up? Check this out. A picture of money? Not just any money. Our money. We just have to do one little job. Job? What have you gotten us into? It's no big deal, really. We're just going to do a stakeout. (laughs) What? a, A stakeout? What are you talking about? Is this some kind of game? Not a game, James. It's real. Barth, we don't do stakeouts. Who are we spying on? Who's hiring us? Makes sense. The client will be here soon. But here's the thing. She's an alien. And the guys we're staking out are government hitmen (sighs) who are holding an innocent woman hostage in that house. Oh, Barth. What, What are you doing? I knew coming here was a mistake. I am calling this off. Wait, wait, wait. James, just wait. 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 Think about Excelsior. What about it? With this money, we could go legit. Authentic uniforms, real communicators, limousines. All the other chapters will be so jealous at the next con. I'm disappointed in you, Barth. What? None of the things you just said have anything to do with why I joined Starfleet. Hey, sorry I'm late. Neil, did you bring everything? Got the radios. So, what's going on? Another bake sale? Oh, come on. I don't call them that often. Hey, guys. Camilla! This whole thing is a bust. Barth thinks someone hired us to do a stakeout. A stakeout? Barth for real? Okay, I I know how it sounds, but hear me out. This is the chance of a lifetime. A real alien is asking us to help rescue someone who's in trouble. It doesn't get more Star Trek than that! You lost me at real alien. You lost me at triple red alert. Barth, what kind of people would randomly hire us to do a stakeout? How did you even meet them? It's complicated. By complicated, you mean it's a scam. No, it's not. Guys, come on. Camilla! I'm eccentric, but I'm not crazy. What harm is there in at least taking a look? I mean, I guess it wouldn't hurt to check it out. Neil? Sure. Let's take a look. I 
can't believe you guys don't trust me. We trust your heart, Barth, but... But what? You sort of... have this tendency to fall in with disreputable people. Oh, come on. When have I done that? The pyramid scheme you tried to sell us on last month? Those were quality knives, and the starter kit only cost $550. The School Book Foundation for Underprivileged Kids in Morocco? How was I supposed to know that was a shell company from India? The cashier's check from a wealthy businessman in the UK. Who knew a cashier's check could be a scam? See anything, Neil? Nothing yet. You don't expect them to stand in the driveway with AK-47s and a skull and crossbones flag, do you? I... I'm pulling the plug. Whatever this is, we are not participating. But what if it's real? Barth, even if they're telling the truth and there really are government agents down there holding someone hostage, this is way out of our league, dude. We should just call the police. No, we we can't call the police. She said the bad guys would know if we did. Come on, Barth. All criminals say don't call the cops. You know why? Because they don't want you to call the cops. Guys, come here. What is it, Neil? Men with guns. Where? Down there on the back porch. Looks like Barth's intel's legit. I'm calling the police. No, wait! James, listen. They're government agents. Black ops stuff. If we call the cops, these guys will find out and kill the hostage. Is that what your so-called alien friend told you? Yes! Maybe we should scope things out a bit more before we decide to do anything. Okay, okay, we'll investigate a little further, but we do this the right way. Everyone take a radio and go to channel 7. Neil, got your ghillie suit? Always. Head to the top of the hill and establish long-range surveillance. Challenge code Queen to Queen's level 3. Countersign Queen to King's level 1, aye, sir. Camilla, your security. Head down the trail a quarter mile and let us know if you see any suspicious vehicles coming up the road. Barth, with me. Yes! That's yes, sir, Barth. Do you guys think Barth is actually going to come through? I hope so. Otherwise, we're going into this completely blind. If I know Barth, he'll come through. He won't be able to resist the money I offered him. We're almost there. We've got incoming. Airborne. Airplane or helicopter? Uh, looks like neither. Some kind of... spacecraft. Did you just say spacecraft? It's nothing I've seen before, and that's saying a lot. Neil? Explain. Best way I can describe it is... UFO. Scammers don't fly around in functional UFOs. The story checks out. See? I told you! James Barth, looks like the craft is coming in for a landing close to your position. We see it. Barth, who are these people? Really? I already told you, they're aliens! How did you meet them? They stole from my store! What? Sorry. Bartholomew. Show me the cash. Where is the cash? Ah, that's the Barth we know. Here. All eight collector's items as requested. Ooh, dibs on the G.I. Joe. You can have all of them. Really? Okay, your loss. Zuri, this is James, the captain of our crew, the USS Excelsior. James? Right. Yeah, hi, uh, I'm sorry, are you really from another world? Called Alethea, five light years from here. You don't look like an alien. Do you have proof? I mean, I'm not on camera or something, am I? I'd say the spaceship pretty well validates their origin. So you're the captain of a crew? I'm relieved to know we're working with professionals. Where's your ship? Ship? 
No, there's no shit. How? James means to say is, we're more of a fan club for a fictional TV show, but we do observe a similar culture and ethos to that of a real Starfleet ship. Oh. Do you have any combat experience? Real or simulated? I'll take that as a no. Oh, what am I doing? This is a real, legit first contact. I need to document everything. Will you take a selfie with me? Uh, sure. Wait, Zuri, bad idea. We're basically at the top of the government's most wanted list, remember? Oh, he's right. We're kind of fugitives on your world. Right now, Alan's mom is in danger. Getting her to safety is our top priority. Can you tell me what you've learned so far? We've identified at least two guards with some machine guns, but that's all we know for sure. Then they must be holding her here. And just who are they? They're with the Department of Energy. They're trying to capture Zuri and Mira. They're using Alan's mom as leverage to coerce him into handing us over. The Department of Energy? Well, that's their cover anyway. If what you say is true, this is a dangerous undertaking. I have to consider the safety of my crew. I'm sure you understand. Oh, of course. The money is real. I'm in. Of course you are. Camilla? If those men have taken an innocent woman hostage, I don't care what government agency they're working for. Let's show our guests what we're all about. Neil, it looks like it's up to you. How can we bear the name Starfleet if we're not going to live up to it when things get real? I'm in. What about you, Captain? I've always believed that Starfleet transcends fiction. It stands as a symbol of curiosity and exploration, equality of persons, and dignity of life. I see no reason why today should be any different. Zuri of Aletheia, how can we help? Assuming all goes according to plan, we should be boarding the shuttle with Dolores in no time. You two seemed like nice boys when you first showed up. I was going to put on a nice brisket and a good spread. I don't think so now. Plus, I can't cook if I'm all tied up. What were you guys thinking? I don't even know what the point is here. What are you doing? I just wanted to say my prayers, read my Torah, move on with life, watch a little Jeopardy, maybe some Wheel of Fortune. How much longer must we wait here? I cannot stand this woman! The boss said we wait. So we wait. It's not my fault we ran out of duct tape. You grab the used room. Did you say you boys need duct tape? I might have some over there in the credenza. Go check it out. Empty. Oh, I forgot. I used the last of it yesterday. <laughs> Sorry. Lie to us again, and you get it big time. What are you gonna do, you big dumb Philistine? <laughs> What? Now, I've been nice because I'm a nice Jewish woman. But if you lay one finger on me, I'll have to do what JL did to Sisera. Who was it? What is she talking about? Don't ask me, man. She's crazy. No one taught you the Tanakh? Well, it's no wonder you're a thug. Are you hearing this? Calm down. The boss said we can't harm the hostages. Remember? The hostage is harming me! Calling all bad guys, do you read me? Over! What the hell was that? Excuse me, you watch your language in my house. Mm, someone is talking to walkie-talkie. What did you call it? What? Walkie-talkie? Dude, no one older than six calls it that. It's a radio. Hello, bad guys, are you there? Who the hell are you? Heck, is this? That's much better. Thank you, son. We have something your boss wants. And what might that be? We'd like to propose an exchange. Let the old lady go free, and we'll give you the hostages you want. Hey, who's he calling old lady? 
He must be close by. If he's talking to Walkie Talkie. <laughs> Hand it over. What did I say about calling in a Walkie Talkie? Okay, how do we even know you're here? Huh? Step outside. Where did you get that shirt? The big and tall store? <laughs> oh, that's funny. How do you like this? That's not very nice. That's it. I could find this annoying pipsqueak now. You stay with old lady. Getting warmer. When I find you, you'll be sorry you messed with the mainstream. Good work, Mr. Barth. I told you, getting under people's skin is my superpower. Okay, one guard out of the house. Now for the other. Mira, you're up. You better let me go. When Pharaoh didn't let the Israelites go, you know what happened to him? Did you shut up already? He got cursed. Just listening to you talk makes me want to curse. I'll tell you curses. You don't even know. <laughs> What was that? Who did that? Dimitri, they're over here. You're all clear, Zuri. Go for package. Moving on the front door. Dolores, are you hurt? Hey! Aren't you Alan's girlfriend? Oh, I knew you kids would come along sooner or later. I'm so glad to see you and that you're still together. It just warms my heart so much. Keep it down. They don't know I'm here. Is Alan here too? He's close by. Are you hurt? They didn't hurt me. They were too scared. You see, I told them about Haman's noose that he built for Mordecai, but in the end he hung himself in. That sobered those boys right up. There's so much you can learn from reading the Torah. Oh, Okay. Well, we're gonna get you out of here. First, I need to get these ropes untied. Hold still. It's too tight. I need to cut it. There's knives in the kitchen. Zuri, one of the guards is coming back. Hurry! You have to get out of here! I'm not leaving without you. Quick, hide in the pantry. I'm, I'm almost through this. There's no time! He's on the back porch. Get out of there, now! Ugh. Hey, who are you talking to just now? To myself. Who else? That's all I ever have to talk to. My son never comes to visit me. Nobody calls. My son doesn't call. It's just me here talking to myself all the time. You're crazy. You might be right about that. I don't know. I like to talk to my spider, Clarissa. Sometimes I talk to pictures of my son, Alan, because he never comes to visit. Oh, my poor mother's heart. I never get what I want. I just want to see him maybe four or five times a week for dinner. I don't think that's Zuri, too much to ask. Come in. Who was that? Is everything okay? Where did his radio come from? Isn't it yours? Hey. Nice throw. Thanks. I just had to calculate which part of the window to hit so it would create the most noise and destruction. How do you calculate a window? Everyone listen. Both of the guards went back inside the house. Zuri's still in there. What? Did they catch her? I can't tell. She's not responding. So Zuri's in here, huh? That's right. You're busted, punks. And I'm not letting go of the talk button anytime soon. So you can all just get comfortable. And when we find Zuri, we're going to let you listen while Cobra practices his amateur torture techniques on her. Then it'll be my turn. Alan, we have to do something. But what? Non-lethal options? None that I can think of. Dimitri started studying torture two years ago. Tell them about your favorite techniques, Dimitri. <laughs> First, I'll peel back fingernails one by one. Wait, 
What should we do? I have to decide. What are you talking about? Something Sharp said before he died. You have to decide ahead of time if you're willing to kill to save someone you care about. And are you? I thought I was. But then when the time came, I... Hey, look at me. That was then, this is now. You know, personally, I find that pulling teeth with pliers is quite enjoyable. You're right. You've got this. I believe in you. Now go save my friends. Fear is a liar. Hello! I know you're in here. Give yourself up, and we promise to make your death clear. What? There's only one place we haven't looked. Would you like to do the honors? With pleasure. Ho ho! Uh. Look! It's a pretty little girl! Uh. Uh. Oh, Looks like we're gonna have more fun than I thought. Hey! What the Leave her alone! Put her down! You hear that, Dimitri? He wants us to put her down. Put her down or I'll shoot. You ever shot someone before, again? <laughs> Didn't think so. Ah! Kill that fool! Put her down or you're next. Ah! You shoot me, you'll hit down. Now drop gun, or I squeeze her neck. Uh. Alan, Stop now! Suri, uh. are you okay? That's what he gets for underestimating pretty little girls. I'll take that as a yes. Thanks to you. I had to. I mean, they would have killed you. You did the right thing. Are you going to be okay? I... I need a minute. If it's not too much trouble, could someone please untie me? Of course. Ugh. Oh, oh. oh, I just knew you two would make a great couple. Mom, I told you, we're just friends. Everyone okay? Alan? What did I miss? Excelsior Desiree, report. What's going on down there? We heard gunshots. Everything's fine, Excelsior. Dolores is safe. Mission accomplished. Everyone listen. There's a suspicious car coming up the road. Moving fast. Looks like trouble. The people who killed Sharp? They must have tracked us here. What do we do now? James, it's not safe here anymore. You and your crew should bug out while you still can. Negative. We're with you until this is finished. Just let us know what we can do to help. Stand by then, and stay out of sight. Sanitation personnel would like to remind all crew members that food preservation chambers are not for storing or growing alien bacteria cultures. If this suit fails and I should expire, I have left instructions that you, as my suit inspector, shall be made to suffer a fate of similar magnitude and duration. Sarek, is this your first time going outside the ship? Earth gazing is a wonderful pastime. I have no interest in earth-gazing, Zika. I'm after evidence. Are you telling me that you've never once thought about visiting the surface? Our laws are clear and unwavering. That's what makes Aletheia great, Mika. Don't ever forget that. 
There are those who disagree with the High Council's decision. And do you count yourself among them? Oh, every time I look out a window. But alas, I am but a loyal, law-abiding servant of the great Aletheian Empire. More devout than some. Tell me what you know. I was sworn to secrecy. Telling you this information could cost me greatly. And what is that? Compared with the satisfaction that you serve the interests of the great Aletheian Empire. Hmm. I suppose a few bottles of the most recent shipment of Flaky Nicoli could disappear from the manifest. A shuttle has been missing for two days. Two days, Zarek. At first, I thought, perhaps, perhaps someone forgot to log an excursion. But it's clear now that it was not taken on official SCA business. Zarek, it was stolen. I was going to report it, but... But what? I was threatened. Garrus. I should have told you sooner. Forgive me. You did the right thing by telling me now. We should take this to Captain Fear. No. No. Keep this between you and me for now. If we expose Garrus too soon might not learn the full story of what he's been up to. Follow him, and report to me on his movements. Where he goes, what he does, who he talks to. I'll begin immediately. We need to do something quick. What if we hold our ground? We have guns now. These guys aren't like Dimitri and his friend. They're professional soldiers. Fighting is only a last resort. Then let's take Dolores' car and make a break for it. If the sniper who killed Sharp is here, I don't think we'd get very far. Then what do you suggest? Mom, this house was built in the Prohibition era, right? I don't think now is the time for a history lesson, son. No, I remember Dad saying that there was an escape tunnel in the basement. Guys, the suspicious vehicle is getting close. Lead the way. Down the stairs, hurry. Find that tunnel. Over here. It should be right behind the... Where is it? Well, there used to be a tunnel. Your father must have sealed it up. He was always fixing things here and tinkering there. Can we break the wall down? <sighs> Looks like he used cinder blocks. We won't get through before they find us. We're trapped. What now? We can't run, so we hide. Everyone find cover that can stop bullets. Guess it's a good thing we have these guns. Ma, find a place to hide. We'll guard the door. Ma? Uh Aha! Here it is. Whoa, what are you doing with that? I found your father's old shotgun. See, I told you, never get rid of anything. You never know when you might need it. Do you even know how to use that thing? If these people want to mess with my house where I raised my Allen, they're going to have to answer to this old Yenta and old Bessie. Uh, fine, whatever. I can't deal with this right now. Just try to keep your voice down, okay? Alan? Yeah. So, to use this, I just point and pull the trigger? I don't know. I think so. I wish Sharp was here. Me too. Zuri. I know. 
I'm reckless. Every plan I make backfires. It makes our situation worse. I thought this time it'd be different, but I guess I was wrong. No, you weren't. Your plan worked. None of this is your fault. Mira's right. You did great. All I was going to say is I'm sorry for not trusting you before, Captain. Mira, you'll get us through this, just like all the times before. I'm sure of it. Thanks, Mira. So, Alan, when you called me from Vegas... I thought we weren't talking about that. I want to. Look, I'm sorry. It just slipped out, okay? That is not how it was supposed to go at all. I had this whole plan about how I was going to tell you and... Wait, wait, what? I love you too. And everything that makes you who you are, with all your awkward moments and idiosyncrasies, I love all of it. But what about your tradition? We're not on Aletheia, are we? No. So stop making excuses and kiss me already. Hey, listen! If any Excelsior crew are in the house, identify. They're coming toward the door. Get ready. Can't be. Sharp? Observant Report is written by Nate Fisher. Script supervision by Jason Barajo. Sound design and score by Nate Fisher. And cover design by Tawny Franzen. This episode featured original songs, including Ships by Nate Fisher and Valerie Lorman, and Tongue Tied by Nate Fisher and Megan McMulkin. 
Tongue Tide will become available with the rest of the season soundtrack after the season finale. The cast for this episode includes Felicia Hebner as Zuri, Megan McMulkin as Mira, Jeff LaFortune as Sharp, Christopher Edwards as Alan, Jeff Scalf as Garrus, Eric Zeisler as Dave, Jenny Enriquez as Amanda, Andre Demond as Martinez, Tatiana Yerksa as Jones, James Ike as Sarek, Nate Fisher as Mika, Tim Linton as Bartholomew, Jamie Austin as Dolores, John Portillo as Dimitri, Luke Escarpeta as Viper, Benjamin Briggs as Roken, and Alyssa Fisher as the computer. We were also joined by cast members from the podcast Starship Excelsior, including James Heaney as James, Jacqueline Luca as Camilla, and Sam Gillis as Neil. If you haven't listened to Starship Excelsior, check them out. If you enjoyed this episode of Observant Report, please consider subscribing, rating, reviewing, and sharing. And as always, thanks for listening. my words. Citizens of the great Alethian Empire, the symbol of progress and advancement, you are the reason I accept an assignment on Ignosi. I was well aware that the landscape was barren, the dwellings would be dark underground caves, and the distance would be isolating. I was prepared to accept all of the disadvantages to speed the progress of civilization, as were all of you. Tonight, I honor your sacrifice. We came here on the word of our leaders that Ignosi would be the solution. The greatest minds in all of Aletheia gathered in one place to advance civilization. But we all have been deceived. Our planets remain overpopulated, resources remain scarce, and there remains great divides between our people. The real solution is right in front of them, yet they refuse to acknowledge it. Close your eyes, sisters and brothers. Imagine oceans of water, rivers, lakes, mountains, diverse agriculture, wildlife, four seasons, and as gatekeepers, only weak, pathetic humans. The High Council wants you to believe that they are our equals, yet their actions betray their true nature, the way they waste their great treasure, which they inherit only by the fortune of their birth, polluting their atmosphere, flattening their forests, and annihilating their wildlife. The High Council is not here. They are back home, resting in their lavish palaces, dictating your destiny from ten light years away. I am here with you. The labor I have performed beside you in the mines have made my voice weak, and yet my resolve remains stronger than ever, for at last all our labor is about to pay off. Soon we will travel to the Paradise Land and create for ourselves a pure Alethian society. That which our leaders promised but fail to deliver, we will take for ourselves. We will subject Earth's inhabitants to our rule, and they will thank us for it, as we teach them to steward their resources, maximize their efficiency, and enjoy their great bounty in peace and equality. There will undoubtedly be those among you who feel that loyalty to the High Council is too honorable to betray or the inconsequential humans' freedoms too sacred to undermine, even for the guarantee of a better life for all. Make no mistake, Alethians. No one will be coerced to join me, but our journey will cost all of our sun's energy. Those who choose to stay behind will certainly perish. 
I invite you now to make your decision. Stand and be counted. 